Okay, so now we're moving to the information processing uh, approach or the cognitive approach. So whenever we talk about cognitivism, uh, we mean things related to um, the brain and the functions of uh, mental processes and so on. Uh, cognitivism was based on cognitive psychology, which was trending during the 1950s. And um, according to the cognitive approach, Second language acquisition was based on mental processes, just like any other um, behavior or process that happens in the brain in which we acquire or uh, share information. Therefore, according to them, there was a limited capacity of the mind, and this limited capacity is what affected second language acquisition. Let's go um, deeper into this. Stemming from cognitive psychology, this approach emphasizes that the mental processes interpre uh, interpreting any kind of experience um, are all also involved in second language acquisition and use of second language. What do we mean by this? Let's look at the following example. Remember Walid, uh, the Lebanese um, guy who lived in Detroit and was learning Arabic as a heritage language. He went to these classes that were held in the evenings after college courses and on Saturdays. That is uh, a limited uh, time. There were times when, after being tired from his long day at the community college and his part-time job, he struggled to focus on uh, the lessons and ended up forgetting any new vocabulary he learned and expressions that the teacher had uh, just introduced. And from your own experience in learning English or French, you know that you tend to forget new vocabulary and so on. Another thing is that at such times, he was still able to carry on conversation in Arabic. He was able to talk in Arabic. However, when it, when um, more complex patterns were required, he seemed to overtax um, his mental resources. It was difficult for him um, to um, employ his brain while uh, producing complex patterns in the second language, which is Arabic here, the heritage language. Based on this, keep this in mind, what is happening with Walid? Why is he forgetting? Why is it difficult for him to produce the complex patterns? He realized that there were limits to his attention. So our main focus here is attention. What affects attention and why do we need attention in language learning? According to the cognitive approach, same mental faculties which we, uh, when we use the word faculty here, miss, we don't mean the faculty of education, we mean ability, okay? So you have the words ability, um, faculty, um, capacity, they kind of have the same meaning. Um, these faculties that we use to solve problems and to do cognitive activities are what underlie language use. Therefore, the second language acquisition is a process that is um, affected in important ways by attention, memory that is remembering the vocabulary words, and processing limitations. I'm exposed to the language, however, I'm having limitations in processing these information related to the second language. One of the most um, findings uh, of the cognitive approach is proposing what is called controlled processing. So here we're, we're moving from processing. What do we mean by processing? We as uh, second language learners pass through controlled processing, which is uh, which happens when you learn new skills related to any um, competence. And controlled processing is slow, demanding, that is tiresome, it demands effort, it demands time from the learner. Again, remember, we're using the word controlled. That is, you have to practice control while, while you are learning. Finally, it is limited by short-term memory constraints, uh, that is, limitations, difficulties. Um, you know that you remember something just now, and then the next day you forget it. This is what happens a lot in second language acquisition. Now, 
as a learner who gets exposed to the language they go through the controlled processing and their brain goes through controlled processing and then over time what happens is that the learner if they proceed with learning the language going to classes and so on they reach what is called the automatic uh, processing here we focus on the word automatic and you know what it means something that happens quickly indirectly and so on here the skill because of being practiced a lot over time is carried out rapidly so you speak faster you write faster you read and understand faster and you listen and comprehend faster than before and it is done without conscious effort there is no need to do an effort uh, in order to um, acquire the skill or use the skill that is and there are no short memory limitations uh, the rules are fixed in your brain and this is what happens now when, when you're listening to me talking in english you understand what i'm saying when you were um let's say the six-year-old you comes now and listens um, to me speaking you would not be able to understand as fast as you do now this is automatic processing so you are passing through automatic processing now as a result based on this model here this increased optimization of the processing skills produces increased fluency and greater comprehension of the second language and this is known from your experience with english or french now we move to another thing how is that helpful knowing about these processes let's take an example a russian learner of arabic definitely has some difficulty when learning new words at the beginning and they find difficulty to produce simple sentences therefore articulating that is uttering the new sound at the same time searching for appropriate words being able to utter properly and choose the right words is uh, uh, from a limited set of learned vocabulary of course sorry they don't know um, uh, the words all the words yet it becomes a difficult process for them remember this is a beginning learner over time however processes become automatic whatever was painstaking that is really difficult time consuming becomes more fluid easy and automatic so that more attention can be directed more focus can be used by the learner and uh, to express more complex thoughts and this is the stage that walid wasn't in yet he wasn't able to form complicated or complex uh, sentence structures another example once the learner has a basic mastery of target language sound more attention can be given to the words to the grammatical patterns to convey the message here learning becomes what moving from controlled processing to automatic processing automatic processing is carried out rapidly and without conscious control uh, speaking or writing the language becomes easy automatic therefore the intermersion processing view is interested in how this development happens using the mental processes and it tries to describe the effects of language learning as affected by mental processes processes within a limited capacity of time this gets us to another concept developed by uh, the cognitive approach there there are actually two concepts the first one is the declarative knowledge so uh, the learner first builds something called the declarative knowledge which is explicit, direct knowledge that this is the case in this grammatical rule. They just know it because they learned it. Example, you need to put an S to a noun to form the plural in English. Then we have the procedural knowledge, which is a procedure um, related to the grammatical rule. I understand how the rule or the structure functions as a learner they know how 
to do something and how to use a certain uh, concept related to the language. And this happens because of automatic performance without having conscious awareness, without um, paying a lot of attention, paying a lot of uh, um, effort in um, producing. Example, being able to produce L2 sentences without conscious reflection on what needs to be done first, second, etc. That is, you are um, saying a, a sentence in English, you're not going to say, okay, this is the subject, now I should put the verb. You just automatically speak. However, notice that when you are learning another language, uh, a foreign language, you try to like check, um, um, did I put the verb right? Am I using the um, the rule, the, the past tense, etc. Uh, did I put the right preposition or not? Here, this is, um, this doesn't happen when you have the procedural knowledge, which is automatic. Okay, therefore, you can look at the model on page 77. Um, what is the model of the cognitive approach? Processing, according to them, is divided into three stages related to memory. We said we have processing, we have attention, and we have memory. First is the incoming information, whatever you're exposed to, sensory information, listening, um, reading, uh, tasting, hearing, whatever. When attended, when attended means when focused on, transfers to the short memory. So when you focus on what is coming, you move them to the short memory. It's when the information is manipulated, it enters your memory, and then you rehearse, you practice, the learner practices, and if whatever is learned from the language is practiced and rehearsed, it transfers to the last stage, which is the long-term memory. It gets fixed, it's always going to be there. Unlimited store for information of the language. We will have this unlimited store of so many forms related to the language we are learning, which can be drawn upon on a lasting basis. You can always refer to it. You're not going to forget that language anymore. Are you going to ever forget English? No, I don't think so. I won't. <coughs> okay, so this is the model. Let's look at it again. We have the incoming information. It enters the short memory. If I don't rehearse, it will decay. That is die, go, it will be displaced gone. However, if I rehearse as a learner, it transfers into the long-term <coughs> um, storage um, or memory. This is it. Thank you for listening.